Hey, what's up guys? Matt here. Welcome to this week's episode of Matt Talks. So this week on Matt Talks, I'm going to talk a little bit about stress. So this September for me has been an incredibly stressful month. Probably the most stressful month I've ever had in my entire life, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> I had one DJ gig, I had two video production gigs that I had to do this month, and well, I guess that's it. It just seemed like a lot. <laughs> so September 11th or 9-11, I had Rock on Water 2016, and I talked about that last week in my Matt Talks episode, and that was incredibly stressful. Like, I don't know how to exactly explain it, but right before it started, right before Rock on Water started, I was like shaking, I was freaking out. I hadn't eaten, I don't think, for a couple hours. And there were a lot of people there, maybe 8,000 people there. And that may not be an exaggeration, but I'm not sure. But just the, I don't know what it was, this, the pressure that I put on myself just kind of took over and made me shake and make me really nervous. I knew we were gonna get all the shots that we needed. I wasn't worried about that at all. I'm not sure exactly why I was so stressed out, but I was freaking out. And then the week after the 18th, we had Hallelujah Fest, which was another video gig uh, Justin and I did. So the 11th was an all day video gig that we had to shoot an entire day of Rock on Water, which was this big festival that I talked about in last week's episode, like I said. But Hallelujah Fest was another big, big day, big video shoot day out in Borden. So it was a little bit farther than Rock on Water, which Rock on Water was just in Jeff. So <laughs> a little difference in destination. Hallelujah Fest really was a technology failure <laughs> for me. I, everything that possibly could have gone wrong went wrong, I think, at Hallelujah Fest. My camera battery, I bought three camera batteries for that camera there that I'm shooting on. and. All three of them died at the end of the show, and it wasn't even as long as Rock on Water was. Like, Rock on Water, or well, no. Actually, yes, it was longer than Rock on Water, so that makes sense why it died. So that's, that's fine, I guess. And then I, have the, I had this little red camera uh, that Scott Shireman lent me for Rock on Water and Hallelujah Fest. That died almost at the end of the show, but it ran out of storage on the SD card. And then my GoPro, it didn't die, but the SD card said it was full. And then I went to put in an, another SD card and it was full, which was weird because I had just taken all of the SD cards out and dumped all the files over onto the computer, so it should have been fine. I'm not sure why it wasn't, but I had to take down the GoPro. The 360 camera died which makes sense now, thinking about it after the fact, that Hallelujah Fest was longer than Rock on Water. So it makes sense why all of these things died compared to Rock on Water, where they didn't die. Now with Rock on Water, I got home around 10 o'clock, 10.30 maybe. And then Hallelujah Fest, I got home around 11, 11.30, I think is how that went down. So I was beat both days and then I had school the next day and it was just really stressful after that. And then the 25th I had a wedding. So the Thursday before the wedding I did the rehearsal and that lasted about 30-35 minutes. The rehearsal did. Uh, there wasn't that many people in the wedding so it kind of just the rehearsal was pretty easy. The wedding and the reception were Sunday, the Sunday after that Thursday. So the 11th, I had Rock on Water. The 18th, I had Hallelujah Fest. The 25th, I had the wedding that I had to do. Now, the wedding was at Montgomery Farm, and we got there around 3 o'clock. The wedding was supposed to start at 4. Reception was supposed to start at 5. Now, we got there at 3 o'clock. No one was there. And we thought that's a little bit concerning. So we needed lunch. So we went out and grabbed some lunch and then came back. And then there were a couple people there. So we had two sound systems for that. I was freaking out the day before and the day of the wedding because with DJ gigs, 
you sometimes don't get the correct songs that the bride wants or the groom wants, and that it's, it's bitten me in the butt before that I got the incorrect song. It's just really stressful to have that much pressure on me. I know it's Jam Brothers with John and Matt, but I take a lot of the, the effort just because I, I don't like relinquishing duties very much. So then we get there, we have the, everything. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have everything that we need. I've got uh, the second sound system for the wedding. The wedding was down in the forest at Montgomery Farm, but the reception was the second floor of the barn. So it's, it was a little ways away, so I had to use two sound systems. The first sound system was set, we got it all in there, and we had a table set up. Now, at the rehearsal, the wedding planner asked me if I had a table. And I was like, yes, we've got a table. Turns out when we got there, I forgot the table. <laughs> so I had to go ask the wedding planner. I was like, do you by chance have a table? And they were like, I thought you had one. And I was like, no. No, I don't. And then we were looking for a table. And at this time, I am freaking out. Because the wedding is supposed to start in about an hour or half an hour or something. I don't even know, remember which time it was exactly or what time it was exactly. And so the wedding planner and I are looking around. And she keeps, it's a second wedding planner than the first one, which was a little weird. But she was like, she specifically said, the first wedding planner told the second wedding planner, she specifically said that you had another table. And I was like, I know, and I'm sorry, I don't have the table. And then we go to the groom or the bride's father and the wedding planner is like, they don't have a table. There's all been a huge miscommunication here. And I was like, oh no. I was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. It was my fault, I'm sorry. I was the one, I told her that we were gonna have the, the, the table we don't have the table, so that's my fault. So John, my brother, John and Matt, he went out and got a table, but I was freaking out because I had to lug everything upstairs, which was really scary and really hard to do because it was wooden steps and it was just, it was not very fun. So I'm lugging around these huge things for the DJ business and I am like dying, it is hot, there's no air conditioning, I'm wearing dress pants, a long sleeve shirt, a tie, it's, oh, it's so, it was so hot. So I finally get everything up there and I am drenched in sweat, I'm like dripping and it was so hot and we didn't have the table yet and I was just sitting there, I was like, oh my goodness, this isn't going to work, I'm freaking out, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm ready to go home, I'm about to throw up. I put so much stress and pressure on myself to make everything perfect and I need to stop. But to continue my story, so it's about 4.30 and the wedding hasn't started yet. I'm up at the reception. John doesn't know what songs they're playing down at the wedding. I know all of this because I was at the rehearsal. So then we get down to the wedding spot down in the forest down there. and. It's maybe five o'clock and the wedding hasn't started yet. The wedding was supposed to start at four. So then we get started at five o'clock and the wedding goes by like that. Now, I will say I didn't have anything turned up. Or I didn't have the sound turned up very loud. I was running the sound back in the forest there for the wedding, like I said, and I just just making sure everyone could hear and stuff, but it was, it was okay. The, the wedding did go by really fast. The, the preacher started with the I do's, so it was really weird because they put the rings on after they said I do, and then they finished the ceremony, which I was asking John, I was like, is that how it normally goes? And he said, no, that's not how it normally goes. So, the wedding went by fast, quick, easy, pretty simple. And then the reception starts at seven o'clock. The reception was supposed to start at five. So yes, the reception starts. We're going through, got some cake cutting and all this stuff and the toasts and all that. Everything's working fine. The microphone's working great. The sound's all right. It's a little quiet in there, but I was just doing that so everyone could talk. And then the dances come around the first dance, great, easy, fine. The father-daughter dance comes on. I hit play. 
Now it's quiet still. People are yelling at me to turn it up. I had it turned down, but then I understand when the actual dances are going on, turn them up. So I, got, I was fine with that. Turned it up. I was checking the levels, looking at things. Then the, the dad and the bride turn to me and like stare at me, and I'm like, what? And then they come over there, and they're like, that's not the right song. And I'm like, are you kidding me? The second wedding I do, maybe the third, maybe the fourth. This might be the fourth, maybe the fifth. I don't know. Fourth wedding, I think. The fourth reception that I did. The second time this has happened, that it's the wrong song. I was angry. I was frustrated, I was stressed out, I was tired. I almost passed out earlier that day because I had stressed myself out so much. Eventually, we got everything set up right. It's all good. The wedding gets over around, or the reception gets over around 8, so we go home. 450 bucks, solid. I split it 50-50 with John, so I got 225. John got 225. The real uh, reason I made this Matt Talks was kind of to tell you what my September was like. And my September's not over. I've got to do See You at the Pole this Wednesday. So I have to wake up really early, go to my high school. I'm in college now, so it's going to be weird going back to the high school. But I have to do See You at the Pole and lead five songs of worship at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so it's going to be real fun. And then I have school that day. And then I have church that night. So it is just jam-packed. I'm not really worried about that. That's going to be easy. I know those songs, so it's going to be not too hard. But the rest of this month, previous to that, really stressed me out. I, I really wanted to quit the DJ business. I think I might, just because it, I put so much pressure on myself to do everything perfectly, and it's not healthy. And I just am so worn out this month. I've been doing so much and really just need a, a day off and a break. And I don't think I'm going to get that this month which is okay, I guess. But I kind of just wanted to let you know, the way stress gets to me and my nerves, I've never, before this month, I had never shaken when I was nervous or when I was stressed. But this month really showed me that when I am stressed and nervous, I just kind of kind of freak out and can't handle a lot of pressure or responsibility, I don't think, which is kind of scary. But the weddings are a thing that I put pressure on myself to make it perfect for the bride just because it's her day and it's kind of important. Now these people, we didn't know them, so it's a little different. Like after the wedding was over, we kind of just left and then we'll never see these people again in our, the rest of our lives. So that's, that's a way to look at it, to see that it's okay, I guess. But I don't... I, I need to remember to drink water and eat before I'm doing anything that is stressful or when there's a lot of responsibility on me. It's such a scary feeling when you're about to pass out. I'm not even sure what it was. I had eaten a little bit of lunch the, the day of the wedding, but I just couldn't handle it. It was so hot. I was really exhausted and I almost couldn't handle it. I wanted to go home, but I knew I couldn't and it was just one thing on top of the other it just wasn't going right and it ended up being fine but it was just incredibly stressful so all in all i'm going to be looking at tips to kind of kill the pressure that's on me and it's really just me no one else puts any pressure on me really but when i want something done right i get it done right or i get it wrong and the the weight of pressure that is on me almost all the time is just not healthy. Eventually I'm going to have to cut something out <laughs> because I have, I'm, I tweeted the other day, I, I know I have a big head, but I'm, I don't know if I can wear all these hats. And what I mean by that is I'm a student, I'm going to college, I don't know if it's full time or part time, four days a week. I'm a worship leader on Wednesday nights and I play on Sunday mornings. I do video work. I DJ. I am an employee at a job and an amazing girlfriend. So she takes up a lot of my time. 
that I'm, that I'm doing so many things, and it is just, it is a lot. And I was not ready for this when I became an adult. But yeah, this, <laughs> this Matt Talks, and I have Matt Talks too. I completely forgot about Matt Talks. I need to do one of these every week, and it's coming down to the wire. Today's Monday. I'm shooting this for next Sunday, but I almost didn't have enough time. But that's okay. If I don't get Matt Talks done or anything like that, that's not too important to me. What's important to me is Sandy and school and leading worship on Wednesday nights. The video and the DJ business are slowly going to the bottom of the, the list. The DJ business, I may quit altogether just because the amount of stress that that holds because it is you really get one shot and you can't really mess up and I mess up a lot. Thanks for listening to me ramble this week. I know it wasn't exciting or anything like that. I'm really excited to edit this. I, I've, I love making videos for you guys and for myself really and I have two angles kind of. I think I have two angles for this week. I'm not sure <laughs> but yeah I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to see me not stressed. Thanks for watching. Peace.